Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege and I want to try making an engine powered by enemy units. Now these guys can impart a little bit of force when they hit you, so I'm thinking it should be possible to harness this inconsistent motion to power a car. So let's get right into it. So loading up into the level editor here, you can see the first thing I'm doing is putting out a bunch of enemies, and this is so I can see how they behave and pick out one that would work best. But after I put them all down here, they just started attacking each other, and I really wasn't expecting that. So I put down five enemies of the same type here, and I also turned down their attack speed all the way, and this seemed to be a lot better. Now, with that sorted out, my first idea here to build a car was actually just to start with a car and have the enemies push it. I figured that their walking force might not be a bad way to go to power an engine, so after I got that car built up here, you can see I let them run around, and it actually wasn't half bad at first. They were pushing it at a pretty good speed, but also, this isn't really an engine, and also it's kind of going to be hard to turn this. So what I wanted to do instead was start building up a platform out of wood here, and figure out a way to have the enemies walk on this while I have the car moving beneath them. Now once I built that up here, you see I also put down the starting cube on the other end, and I was hoping the enemies were going to target this. And to some extent they did, but also they just seemed to walk around aimlessly, and I think they were targeting the wood platform they were walking on. That wasn't exactly going to work, so what I did here is started copying down some wood piles, and since these are level objects, the enemies shouldn't target them. But after I raised it up a little bit here, I still needed to have these supported, so what I wanted to do is use some wood here and have it completely surround these piles. This helped, but the enemies still were jumping off and trying to attack the wood. Now I figured maybe one layer of these wood piles wasn't quite enough, so I wanted to raise this up a little bit more and add a second layer. This should separate the enemies from the wood a lot more, and once I got to put it here, I gave it a test, but you'll notice they're just falling right into the cracks. Sometimes though, they were actually targeting the starting cube, so this at least seemed to be some progress. Now I deleted the wood piles though, because really there was no good way to secure them, but I figured if I put back in the wood platform, maybe I can figure out a better way to attract the enemies besides the starting cube, and I started out here with some different types of enemies. Now, for whatever reason, these enemies started to be attracted right to the starting cube again, so that wasn't exactly what I was going for. I tried a different type of enemy here, encasing in the attacking enemy, and this seemed to sort of make them attracted, but it was kind of hard to tell, and the enemies were attacking so irregularly that really I wasn't getting any progress. Now, another idea I had here was to tell the enemies to focus on fragile blocks. I figured if I put down glass here, which is pretty fragile, they'd want to attack it, and that would guide them away from everything else, but for whatever reason they just stopped attacking when I did this and they just weren't behaving anymore. So I went back to my wood platforms, but this time I wanted to shake things up a little bit. Instead of letting the enemies move, I'm actually going to lock them in place and see how they do here. Now I also started building up a rotating wheel here and I wanted to see how the enemies would hit this. So with those arms built in place, I also made sure to brace them up to give it a bit more rigidity, and it wasn't bad at first. Now these enemies were still moving around a little bit, which is a little weird, but they were hitting it around, which I kind of liked. So I went ahead here, I replaced the enemy I was using with a different one, and I actually wanted to make a different wheel. This time, I wanted to make sure it could rotate around fully, so I put down a rotating joint, and on that, I put down a bunch of pieces of wood. Now, with that done here, I actually secured the wood piles in place as well, and you'll notice that the guy is starting to target them. With a little bit more luck, he actually did hit it, and you'll see on the way back, he hit it as well. Now, that's a lot of force, and I figured I could start to make an engine off of that. Now, I put down a gear here just to see what I could do with it, and you'll notice now as it rotates the arm, it also rotates the gear, but this isn't exactly what I want, because you'll notice Notice the arm sort of bounces back and forth as the guy hits it, and I want something that could convert that reciprocating motion into constant rotation. Now I copied over my arm here and actually put it over to the side, but you'll notice it's a little bit shorter now, and that's by design. As the big arm goes back and forth, it should drive that small arm around and around, and you'll already notice here I'm sort of beginning to get that motion. It gets bound up quite often here, but it does sort of start to work. So to make it a little bit more continuous, what I wanted to do here is make a flywheel. I started to do that by putting down some pieces of wood and ballast on the end. Now if I turn up the ballast weight a lot, it should create a pretty good flywheel, and you'll see here as I start to spin it, the bottom part starts to go back and forth, and the guys are starting to hit it. Now to hopefully get them to hit it a little bit better, what I wanted to do was raise them up a bit and put them on some wood. It seemed like I was having a timing issue before, and now it was maybe a little bit better, but they still seem to be hitting it at the wrong time and sometimes stopping the motion. So to get them to time right, what I wanted to do here is add in pistons. Now these I'm able to expand and contract, and the idea is that as I'm starting to pull back, if they expand out the pistons, the guy should hit it, and that should allow them to hit the piston right at the right time to keep the wheel spinning. Now, they just seem to not be targeting the pistons quite right, though, so I added on some wood instead, and I figured maybe they'd want to be targeting wood a little bit better. This seemed to actually help quite a bit here, and they did want to target it, and you'll notice they get a few good hits out of this, and I keep the wheel spinning. But unfortunately, I 
it still just wasn't quite working. Now, while I was looking around for some solutions, I ran across some settings on the enemies, and I'm able to activate and deactivate the enemies when I want. This sounded exactly like what I wanted, because that would mean that I'm able to activate them as the piston's pushing out, and that'll allow me to get my timing problems sorted. But no matter what here, I couldn't seem to get it to work, and the enemies seemed to hit whenever they want, or they would just stop hitting altogether. So this really didn't help at all, and instead, I wanted to try using an archer. Now, the archer is a totally different type of enemy, so I figured maybe mixing these up was the way to go here. So with him in place, I wanted him to attack the arm, but he seemed to just look in different directions and not really care. That was sort of to be expected though, and I figured once I had an enemy to the back, maybe he'd want to target him, and he definitely was interested, but that was about the end of that, and he just sort of stared at it blankly. And the only time I could ever get him to actually hit anything was when he was falling down. That wasn't very helpful, and instead I switched back over to these farmers. Now again, I was getting a few good rotations out of this, but nothing crazy, and I wanted to try a different enemy next. This next one is actually one of the better ones I had here, and you'll see his attack is almost straight in front of him. This means that he almost always hits the same spot, and that makes him a lot more consistent. Now, I was hoping with this new enemy's consistency, I'd be able to try out a new idea I had for the timing issue. This time, I'm surrounding him in wood, and I was hoping he'd be able to still hit the piston in front of this, but it sort of just ejected him, so I got rid of the piece of wood in front of him, but the idea was still to push in and out the entire enemy instead of just the piston. Now you'll see once I got this put in place here, I tried using some wood in the front to hold him in, but he seemed to sort of hit the wood around a lot and cause himself to fall over or just get ejected from the machine. Now this was obviously way too inconsistent, and I wanted to try moving in and out the entire piston. This is one of the last things I didn't try here, and the plan was literally to move the entire piston up and down and get the enemy to hit only when I drop it down right in front of him. And it did seem to move up and down well, but the enemy really wasn't interested in hitting it for some reason, and no matter what I did, he was always just uninterested. Now eventually here, I decided to get rid of the brace connecting the piston from the flywheel, and once I did that, you'll see I put in suspension in between them. Now the suspension's able to compress a little bit, and already you see here I'm getting some constant rotation. Now I think what's happening here is that as the enemy hits the piston, it takes a second to compress, and that little extra bit of time is enough delay for the wheel to come back around and have it apply its force to continually rotate the piston. Now that was a great start, but of course the force is being applied at one point in the rotation and I wanted to even that out a bit. So I added in a second piston here and this should also be doubling my power output. So with that copied over here, you can see I'm offsetting it here and I'm putting it back in place. Now once I got those hooked up, I directly braced the two flywheels together and with that, I'm giving it a test here. And they seem to not really be working out so well. Power was being applied sometimes, but then the guys would just start turning around and hitting the air. Now I tried putting down some wood in front of them on decouplers to get their attention. That seemed to help a little bit, but still they started targeting the other pistons occasionally and they really weren't interested in keeping anything moving. Now I thought that maybe I just copied over something wrong, so I copied it over directly this time and then I added in a steering block and that'll allow me to rotate the second piston around 180 degrees. So put that in place here, I tried making that work and I got the offset on the pistons and with one guy, it actually was making this rotate around consistently. That was a good start, and I figured once I added in the second guy, I should be getting a lot more power out of this. But once I got him in here, it stopped working again. It would just randomly hit the pistons, and things seemed to be really flimsy and not really working that well. Now, I changed out the enemy I was using to hopefully get things to work a bit better, and you'll notice with one piston again, things seem to have a lot more force. And because one piston was working so well, I just wanted to focus on that for now before I went and tried to do a two piston design again. Now, you see me adding in a wheel at the bottom here, and and on that, I put down four steering hinges. Now, I also put down four at the top as well, and once I got this connected up with four bar linkage, as the enemy starts moving the piston, notice that the wheel rotates at the same rate. Now, this is good. This should mean that I'm able to actually transfer my motion to the wheels, but the wheel is going a little fast, and I knew I'd have to deal with that in the future. For now, though, I just want to get the second wheel in place and brace these together. I'm also bracing everything to the body here, and I have to be kind of careful. There's only a few points on this that actually aren't rotating that need to be braced, and once I have those braced, is in place here. You'll also notice I'm moving up the gear to the top, and this is to like attach it up to the flywheel and create some gear ratios. This should allow me to reduce the speed and therefore increase the torque on the wheel and hopefully get something that actually works. Now I made that first gear ratio here, and after that I added in a second one and decided to go with three. Now eventually I decided to actually add in four here, and it gave me a pretty good reduction. You can see the gear in the bottom is rotating very slowly, and that should create a lot of torque despite my enemy engine not really having that much power. So I hooked up a wheel to it here, and you'll see it's fundamentally the same idea, but it should be able to ride on the ground. Now I also extended this out, and I wanted to power a 
second wheel off of this. Now I wanted to make sure that both of the wheels at the back here were going to be powered because if only one of the wheels was powered, that would make it slightly turn to the left or right. And also I was worried about the machine binding up. And with that looking good, I started bracing up some stuff here and I put down the front wheels. Now this was pretty much just a direct copy. And once I did that, you see here I'm bracing up to the front and pretty much everything else. Now the next challenge is going to be to find a way to get the enemy to not just fall over like this. The problem is as he hits, the whole car sort of jumps in the air and then he knocks everything around. You can see in the second test, he does hit the piston a bit and it wasn't even that good of a hit and he still ended up just dying instantly. Now I started out here and I surrounded him almost completely with wood. I was hoping to kind of keep him a little bit contained, but he still ended up just jumping out of this right away and it was a little better, but not much better. And putting wood in front of him seemed to really stop him from hitting the piston and he still ended up jumping out. Now for a bit of an unconventional solution, I wanted to use a hot air balloon. This acts somewhat differently than everything else, and since it should be stable, it should have supported him. The problem though is it rotates freely, and that wasn't really great. They put down a couple more, and it didn't really seem to help, but I did put them down to dumb orientation, but it still didn't really seem to change anything. Now I thought that maybe just springs were the easiest way to go here, and these would help out. This wasn't really close though, and he still would just fall over almost instantly, and sometimes even just attack the spring platform. Now I tried completely surrounding him with wood this time, but he would sort of just get dazed often and not want to attack at all. Now finally here, I put down a grabber and I just wanted to see if this would work. Now originally, I didn't think this was going to work because I thought enemies couldn't attack while they were being grabbed. That wasn't true though and it seemed to work perfectly. I was holding him in almost exactly the way I wanted and he wasn't attacking the grabber or anything beneath it. And you can see once I streamlined things a bit, in this test, it's actually working out really well. You see, it makes some good progress here and it's really consistent. This is good, but I can't steer this at all and this is really sped up footage because this is quite slow. So what I did here is I actually started deleting part of my gear ratio and I tried to do a much shorter length here. Now after that, I'm gonna get another piston again. This time though, since it was a lot better optimized, I thought that adding them together might actually work out. So put this in place, I used my steering block again to rotate these around and now testing it out with an enemy, it was sort of just the same problems from before. He still was just knocking the pistons around oddly and it really wasn't getting anywhere. Now to make the engine more stable, I did find a slight optimization. If I use a grabber here and rotate these pieces around, they lock in place quite nicely and this creates a very rigid connection that makes things work a little bit better. I was getting parts of rotation here, but it still just couldn't sustain continuous motion. And that's when I decided to go back to a single piston design and I optimized this a lot more. You see, I have a ton more power now. And with that looking better, I actually copied this over again. And now my other plan was actually to have these two pistons act somewhat autonomously. They weren't gonna be directly attached, but instead the left piston is gonna be attached to the left wheel and the right piston is gonna be attached to the right wheel. This means that since they're acting almost as separate pistons here, I get really good motion out of this and I get quite a bit of speed. Now this engine is really inconsistent. It does stall very often, but when it is working, you see I get a lot of speed out of this and honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. Now steering is also kind of a problem. I'm able to sort of do it here, but since these two pistons are acting independently, if one happens to be going faster than the other, the car is gonna slightly turn. That also feeds into the pistons acting differently since as one starts to turn, it makes the other one go slower and then the enemy has to pick up a bit. So with more optimization, I'm sure this could be a lot better, but for now, I'm actually pretty happy with this. So guys, thanks for watching. Now these enemies, I cranked up their force on a ton and without that, there was pretty much no way to get this done. But I'm glad these options are at least accessible to the user because without that, this would have been a very short and boring video. So if you have any other suggestions for future challenges or builds, make sure to leave them down below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any other questions or comments, make sure to leave those down below too. And otherwise, till next time.